Hi, I'm the Rick in Rick Turns, and this is the third video in my series of videos about making this tool rest. Today I'm going to be talking about raw materials. What kind of steel do we need to make a tool rest like this? It doesn't actually take a lot of material to make one of these tool rests. Obviously, it's just not that big. We've got a fairly short post here. We've got uh, a length of angle iron right here. Uh, this one is 8 or 10 inches long and the only other real component is it is the wear strip that I put on here. So this is for my lathe, this is 1 inch. Uh, it may be different for your lathe. This is a piece of uh, 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 quarter angle iron. This is a piece of 5 16 inch steel. I think this is stainless steel from stuff, some stuff I had left over. Uh, but obviously there's not a whole lot of materials involved. The only other thing we need in materials is silver brazing filler and some flux to go with the silver brazing. So I'm going to be talking about just this limited amount of stuff in this video. Uh, rod for the tool post, rod for the wear strip, angle iron for the arm of the tool rest. The steel we're going to need for making tool rest is mild steel and the numerical designation you want to look for is 1018 and probably get cold rolled. You can get hot rolled, you can get cold rolled. Cold rolled generally has a smoother finish I believe. Hot rolled is a little bit cheaper, not much. Uh, I think the uh, smoothness of, of the finish is enough to pay an extra you know, 50 cents or a dollar per foot for it. Now to get this steel, you're probably going to need to go online unless you've got a metal supplier right near you. Uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, the other building supply stores, uh, they, they do sometimes have metal stock. They'll have angle iron, they'll have aluminum, they'll have some bar, um, they'll have some uh, rod like this, but not quite like this because all that I've seen in, in the building supply stores a rod that goes up to about a half an inch, maybe five eighths, and the uh, angle iron that they have is is a little bit on the lightweight side for what we want to make here. Now you can see this. This I think is one eighth inch angle iron. It might even be a little less than that. Um, I bought this and then decided it just did not look like it would be strong enough. It probably is, but. Uh, I decided I want to go with something that at least looked a little beefier than this. So you're probably not going to be able to buy this stuff from your local building supply store. And that's why I say start looking online. Now if you look in the notes below the video, I'll put in some links there to steel suppliers that I bought small quantities from. So, as I said, we want mild steel. We want 1018 steel, although it doesn't particularly matter. But the point is, you don't need to spend extra money for uh, the more exotic steels, or not even exotic, but, but uh, the more expensive steels. Uh, we don't need spring steel. We don't need stainless steel. We don't need tool steel. We certainly don't need high-speed steel. This is plenty strong enough for what we want. The online stores generally sell by the foot. What I generally do when I order a piece is order about two foot worth. Now, two foot of this one inch steel, that's probably going to make me, I usually start with around five inches, so two feet would make me at least four uh, tool rest. So considering the shipping cost, it's worth it to go ahead and get a little bit more. Uh, at the stores that I shop at for the one inch rod like this, one foot sells from six to eight bucks. And two feet varies between eleven and fifteen dollars depending on the particular site you're buying from. There's a little variation in price, so you might want to check several sites before you buy. You can expect to pay a minimum of around thirteen dollars, maybe a little more than that, depending on the site, for your shipment. So this is going to give us the tool post. My tool post is one inch. There are smaller lathes that use smaller diameters of steel. 
This is seven eighths. I have a friend and we were making a tool rest for his lathe, seven eighths of an inch. So we bought a piece of this. Now in that case, although we measured seven eighths of an inch inside his banjo, it was actually uh, a little bit less than that, maybe one hundredth, two hundredths less. This wouldn't fit. And when we get to the point of, of working on the steel, I'll show you what we did to make it smaller. The only other rod that you're going to need, and this is optional, you don't actually have to do it, is a piece of uh, much smaller diameter to be the wear strip that goes along the top edge of the bearing surface of the tool post arm. Also for this wear strip, you don't need fancy steel. 1018 is fine, mild steel is fine. For the tool rest arm, this is a little bit larger than what I normally use. This piece of angle iron is two inches here and two inches here, and it's a quarter inch thick. This piece is three sixteenths inch thick. It's two inches here on this dimension. It's three inches here. Uh, I decided to go with a slightly thinner steel. I think it'll still be plenty strong enough, but I, I kind of wanted to try it out and make sure. Now the advantage of using a piece of angle iron is, first of all, it's a lot easier to make than some of the other things that I've used. But the other advantage is, if you use a piece like this, we're going to mount a one inch tool post here, so you're losing about one inch of width right here across this way. And what that leaves you with is a projection from the mounting point of your banjo forward towards the work. This is gives me about a one inch projection. This piece is going to give me about a two inch projection. Now it may not make any difference to you. It depends on your lathe and your banjo. But on mine, when I'm doing very small work and I need to get uh, the tool rest right up close to the work, it doesn't do real well unless I've got a projection on the post. If I use a tool post like this, it essentially has no projection away or forward from the tool post. So this tool rest, uh, it'll work, but it has to be farther away from the workpiece than what I'd really like. That's why I originally decided to make a tool rest out of angle iron like this. So same thing at the online tool sites when you go to buy some angle iron, you just want mild steel. So just get what looks like a good price. Once again, you don't need much. You're going to have to buy at least a foot. At the online stores uh, where I shop for metal, a piece of 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 quarter, what I used for this tool rest, it runs about $9 a foot. Uh, no, sorry, $9 for 2 feet. So I also want to talk about, again, about brazing. Brazing filler. Open this up. Now I've used most everything in here. You can see this is uh, coming in wire. You can also get brazing and rods, which I think I used once, but lately I've, I've found one I needed as a wire. And it's fairly convenient. It's small and it's uh, flexible, so it doesn't take much storage space. I did cover brazing in my last video on tools. Uh, I just want to mention it again. You want a silver brazing filler. You don't want something that says silver solder. There's a lot of, a lot of products that say silver solder. They're really intended for plumbing work. But you need something that's got at least 45% and preferably 56% silver. And the silver makes it a little more expensive. So you're going to have to pay a little bit for that. So shop around on the internet. When you buy it, you may or may not get some flux included with it. The flux is used, you put it on the metal surfaces that are going to be joined. This one comes with a little brush on it. You just brush that on the surfaces, you put the surfaces together, and then you uh, start heating it. The flux serves to protect the metal from oxidation while it's being heated. One more warning, 
don't get a silver brazing material that has cadmium in it. <coughs> uh, they are still available. You don't want it because it's toxic when heated. And uh, there's no reason to expose yourself to it. It's fine without the cadmium. So those are the materials that we need for this tool rest. Look in the notes for the video to see uh, the places that I've dealt with and can recommend them from personal experience. That's it for today's episode on how to build this tool rest. The next episode, number four, is going to be how we determine what size, what length tool posts we need. All right, see you next time. Thank you.